Ludwig von Beethoven was born to a musical family in Bonn, Germany, on December 16, 1770. At the age of seven, he gave his first public piano performance. Beethoven's father wanted to make Beethoven into a, a child prodigy a la Mozart, but uh, the whole child prodigy thing never really took off. In 1783, Beethoven published his first work, Nine Variations on a March by Dressler, and in the following years, he continued to earn a living as a musician. Since his father was totally irresponsible and there were two younger brothers, Beethoven helped to support his family by giving music lessons and also by playing in the court orchestra. In 1792, Beethoven worked under Austrian composer Franz Josef Haydn, and by the 1800s, his compositions established him as Mozart's successor. When he was a young man of 25, 27 in the musical capital of Vienna, he was, had a blazing career as a pianist and also as a composer, and the two dovetailed because he wrote music for himself to play. Although losing his hearing, Beethoven created some of his greatest masterpieces from 1802 to 1814, including the Appassionata Sonata and his only opera, Fidelio. When Beethoven was in his mid-30s and discovered that he was losing his hearing, his musical style changed and he wrote pieces that are often called his heroic works, like the Fifth Symphony and the Emperor Piano Concerto. Starting in 1815, Beethoven's personal life unraveled and his work slowed tremendously. After the death of one of Beethoven's brothers, Beethoven succeeded in adopting his nephew and uh, there were tremendous court battles. All of this led to a, a less productive period in Beethoven's compositional output. By 1819, Beethoven was completely deaf, but his composing experienced a rebirth, marked by some of his most renowned works, including the Misa Solemnis and his Ninth Symphony. As the deafness increased to the point where he could no longer perform in public, he wrote pieces for a theoretical other, not for himself, and this was a big point of departure. He was writing for the future, and this had never happened before. Beethoven died on March 26, 1827, and had a public funeral with over 20,000 people mourning his loss. Beethoven's music, and in some ways his personality and the legends and myths around him, fundamentally changed really how we think about music. Today, Beethoven's enduring work continues to be played worldwide, from the Olympics to films, and even during the fall of the Berlin Wall. Beethoven was unique among composers of his day in that he believed that music had not only an entertainment value, but also a moral and humanistic value. His music was not only going to uh, be enjoyed by people, but that it was going somehow or other to help humanity in some way to emerge from the darkness into the light.